And I now recognize the gentlewoman from Florida, Ms. Kamek. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, very timely topic as we head into a very important election in this year's midterms. And I think it's something that we all have grave concerns about. Of, of course, election integrity is a driving issue. And I think as a, a fundamental right to, to go out and vote, uh, we need to really ensure that people's ballots are being counted as they intend them to be counted when they are cast. And so I know folks across the country are, are really watching this and um, members have been coming and going. So for our witnesses, I'm just gonna ask a couple of questions to make sure that I understand exactly uh, where y'all stand on this. So I'll start uh, with Ms. Oliver. Do you believe that a government issued ID complete with a photo should be required to vote? And this question will go to all witnesses, but I will start with uh, Ms. Oliver. Thank you, Congresswoman. We do not require that here in New Mexico. It is one option. Uh, and I think as and many of the witnesses, excuse why, me. How can you verify the identity of an individual without a photo ID that is government issued? They are required to provide other identifiable information. Again, a, a photo ID is an option for voters. Um, they can also provide other forms of documentary ID or give a verbal confirmation of personal uh, private information to verify their identity. That doesn't seem particularly secure, so we might want to work on that. Uh, Mr. Kelly. I remind myself that I am retired, so I can give my personal opinion now. I don't believe it would be a bad thing to provide an ID uh, to increase voter confidence. Uh, I don't know ultimately what problem it solves in some cases, but I don't think it would be a bad idea. Okay, Ms. Uh, Howard. I think that it's hard to look at one piece of the um, election. Um, Just a yes or no, ma'am. Do you believe that a government ID complete with a photo should be required to vote? No. And uh, Mr. LaRose. Congresswoman, the simple answer is yes, and most Americans believe that as well. And we should make sure everybody can get one easily and that we maintain accurate voter rolls. Absolutely. I think it's very curious that of, of the four witnesses that we have here today, three um, have said in some form or fashion that no photo ID should be required to vote, that a verbal confirmation uh, is all that is su to suffice that a person is who they say they are. I mean, I can go out and say that I'm Jennifer Aniston, but that doesn't make me Jennifer Aniston as much as I would like it to be. So we need to, I think, one, uh, if we're talking about this issue, start with the basic premise of verification. You need to have a photo ID to cash a check. You need a photo ID to live life. Uh, we require driver's licenses with photos to drive a car. There are basic things that we have to do in life that require photo IDs. I don't think that this is discriminatory in any shape, way, form, or fashion. And I would love to see our local officials work to really make sure that uh, it is as accessible and easy to get a government issued ID complete with a photo so that we don't have these questions down the road. I'm gonna to go to my second uh, question for the uh, witnesses. Do you believe that third party political organizations that are funded by political parties should be prohibited from signature verification? And I'll start with you, Mr. Rose, LaRose, excuse me. Yeah, in Ohio, that work of signature verification is done by sworn election officials from both parties and observed by the public if they wish to observe that. That's where signature verification should be done. That's how we do it in Ohio. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. LaRose. Ms. Howard. Um, thank you for the question. I, you know, I, I think that uh, Secretary LaRose brings up an important point. The um, signature verification procedures that I'm aware of are done by election officials, many of whom are, are sworn in and sworn to uphold the state and but not in Georgia. Constitution. Uh, Mr. Kelly. I believe in the exact same thing Secretary LaRose said. Thank you. Uh, and Ms. Oliver. I agree with Secretary LaRose, and I will just quickly add that in my state and many, we do allow political party observers of that process. I appreciate that. Um, for uh, Ms. Oliver and uh, Mr. LaRose, I am sure you all are aware of the ERIC system, the system that allows states to talk to each other. So if uh, a person um, who is registered to vote in Florida uh, passes away in Ohio, the two states can talk to each other to make sure that those voter uh, rolls are updated. Do you believe that each state should employ the use of the ERIC system? And I'll start with you, Ms. Oliver. 
A absolutely. We use it here and we encourage it everywhere. Thank you. Mr. LaRose. Great tool for fraud prevention and gives us a way to catch people that try to vote in multiple states. Even though that's rare, we can catch them now using Eric. Every state should consider using it. I appreciate it. Uh, my time has expired, so uh, I will submit my, the remainder of my questions for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. Of course.